Hi, welcome. In the previous video, we have stated what is ampere circuital law as well as we have seen its mathematical significance. So, in this video, we have to look at at least one application of ampere circuital law. Ampere circuital law has wide applications. Ampere circuital law is mainly applied to coaxial cables okay to find what is strength of the field within the cable around the cable all that so that is one of the major application of uh, ampere circuit law uh, before getting to that it's always better to um, know how to find expression for magnetic field intensity using ampere circuit law and as i told in the previous video it is also better to verify uh, whether ampere circuit law or whether applying ampere circuit law in steady magnetic field gives me similar results to biot savart's law whether they give me give same expression uh, for calculating field intensity due to an infinitely long straight conduct so obviously to start with the derivation i have to consider an infinitely long straight conductor and I will be placing it along Z axis as usual and always remember that it, it is carrying some current capital I and the current is flowing along the direction of positive Z axis. So, since I am applying ampere circuital uh, law, I have to consider a closed path which is symmetrical around this conductor. So, let me choose a circular closed path. So, I appeal you to refer the figure which you have on the screen. So, it is a self explanatory uh, figure. Again in the figure I have taken uh, the radius of the circular path as r. So, you please consider it as a rho ok. So, that we do not have any confusion in notation when we proceed with cylindrical coordinate systems right. So, let, let uh, please consider uh, the radius of the circular path to be rho ok yeah now one more thing uh, you should remember here is the direction of magnetic field intensity is assumed to be tangential to the closed path ok means a f i cap uh, gives me the direction of h vector any instant i measure magnetic field intensity I measure it with respect to closed path and at any point on this closed path I know that the direction is circular. So, I have to consider the direction of magnetic field around the conductor which we have already discussed around the conductor. So, we consider the direction to be a phi cap ok or we always say that magnetic field intensity is tangential to the closed path. Okay. Now, the procedure remains the same as we have proved ampere circuit law. Okay. We will be using ampere circuit law here. So, we will be applying ampere circuit law to find what is magnetic field intensity. So, I can directly use this equation h dot dl is equal to i. Okay. And in this case, as per the figure which I have drawn here, I need to find what is h dot dl. So, as we have done in the previous video here h will be considered as h phi a phi cap as I explained just now ok not from the previous video we will pull it off dl from the previous video ok. So, just now I told you that magnetic field intensity is always tangential to the closed path. So, I have to consider only the phi component of h vector. So, as you know h vector is supposed to have all the three components rho component, phi component and z component in cylindrical approach. But here h vector is going to have only phi component 
H is measured at any point on the circular path. So, it is going to have only phi component. So, my H vector is just H phi A phi cap. H phi is the magnitude and A phi cap is the direction. H phi A phi cap and DL will pull it off. Okay, DL is rho D phi A phi cap. So, again here A phi cap dot A phi cap is going to be 1. So, I get my H dot DL as H phi rho d phi. So, this is what is my h dot d l. Now, I need integral line integral of this. So, close line integral of h phi rho d phi is equal to i. This is what Ampere circuital law says. Okay. Now, I, I do not have any computens, computations to be done on RHS. It remains i. So, let me continue solving the LHS. So, while concentrating on LHS, I know that the H phi, right, the H phi and rho both are constants, okay, assuming that, okay, I am just assuming that H phi is constant because we are in a steady magnetic field. So, H phi is constant and circular path radius rho remains constant. We are not going to uh, change the uh, circular path, okay, circular path once considered will be constant you are not going to increase the rho or decrease the rho okay, radius of the circular path. So, h phi rho, so I, ha, I am le leaving, le left out with integrating only d phi and as already explained in previous video d phi is around the path. So, I have to integrate it from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, so, integral d phi is phi and upper limit is 2 pi. So, this, this will end up as h phi rho 2 pi after the integration. It is very straightforward. Okay. So, uh, d phi integral is phi and applying the limits I get 2 pi. So, h phi rho 2 pi. So, this tells me that h phi rho 2 pi is same as current, the same as current. But what is my interest? My interest is to find magnetic field intensity at a point right what is magnetic field intensity at this point p which is lying on the circular path agree so what is the magnetic field intensity here due to this conductor that is my interest okay now for that from this expression i will try to represent what is h phi so from this expression what is h phi? h phi can be written as, I have to just take this the other side, h phi can be written as i by 2 pi rho. So, I get h phi as i by 2 pi rho. But what I am interested in? I am interested in h vector. I got phi component of magnetic field intensity, but I am interested in the total magnetic field intensity. Here, I know that what is the total magnetic field in this h vector? It is just h phi a phi cap. It does not have any other components because magnetic field intensity is always tangential. So, h vector is nothing but h phi a phi cap. So, I already have my magnitude that is h phi which is i by 2 pi rho. Just substitute here. So, I get expression for h vector as i by 2 pi rho a phi cap. Yeah, amazing. See, is it not the same expression which we got for biot savart's law? Is it not the same expression which we had taken to prove Ampere circuital law? So, I am getting the same expression for magnetic field intensity due to infinite conductor. Now, you can decide upon if the method is not specified, okay, which law you will apply to derive magnetic field intensity. This appears or this looks much easier compared to the derivation steps which you have to go through that is mathematical computation steps which you have to go through while applying biot savart's law to find the same expression. Okay? And it is always good practice as I told you to write the unit as well as to write the expression for b vector because b vector is just mu into h vector. So, b vector is nothing but mu i divided by 2 pi rho a phi cap Weber per meter square. 
So, I hope this derivation is crystal clear. So, thank you till we meet for next video.